Hi, I'm back. After all that chaos that was E3, I took a day off. Kim and I went to the zoo. We saw a baby hippo. It was adorable, but enough of that. I have another very exciting video. This is insane. If you have family, friends, or just know a guy that won't stop saying to you, ah, Nintendo Switch, that has no games. Why would I get one of those? This is the video to send to them. 70 games coming to the Nintendo Switch. All within pretty much the next year and a huge chunk of them, a majority of them coming before the end of the year. Most of the games I'm talking about today either got announced to E3 or were giving release dates at E3. And what's crazy is almost every game on this list I have not talked about before in an upcoming games video. Just so cool to see not only these exclusives coming to the system, but third party games all the way from indies to AAA big budget blockbuster titles. Okay, but I've blabbed on too long. I know you're excited. This is how it's gonna work. I'm going to give you the release date of every game I talk about today and I am listing them in order of release date so you'll know exactly what to be excited for and when. I hope that this video helps you in some way or just gets you excited to play some cool games on Switch and if it does make sure you tap all over that like button, hair flip on the subscribe button, I just got a bunch of hair in my mouth, and hit the bell with notifications turned on. Okay, we have 70 games to power through, so let's just get started. Um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit with this first one and put Cadence of Hyrule here. It came out on the 13th, and if you haven't played it, you need to. I finished it yesterday, and I loved it. And technically, there is 71 games on this list, so it's not even cheating. My friend Pedro releases on June 20th. I've actually already received a code, and I've been playing it, and let me tell you, it is fun. I relate it to a 2D side-scrolling Max Payne style game. It is exhilarating and nothing will beat the feeling of slow-mo jumping while firing at two different directions and one of them is hitting a frying pan, which is then ricocheting bullets and killing enemies behind cover. This is an action-packed game and I'm really loving it. Oh, and Catan on this day as well. Then the next day we have Crash Team Racing. I don't think I need to say anything about this one. We finally get to play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on June 25th. So if you played and enjoyed Curse of the Moon, make sure you grab this one too. We actually have two more releases that same day too, with Super Neptunia RPG, which is a RPG, and Guacamelee 1 and 2 Collection, which I've been talking about for a while now. I love those games. And yes, for those playing along at home, June 26th is Super Mario Maker 2 Day, baby! And I am very, very excited. At that point, our wallets get to take a week off until July 2nd, when Red Faction Remastered releases on Switch. And if you don't care about that game whatsoever, then I have good news for you. Two days later, we get the Stranger Things 3 beat-em-up game I've been looking forward to. And if even that doesn't interest you, your wallet gets an even bigger break until July 12th, when it then it, it gets hit pretty hard, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Because God Eater 3 and a little game called Dragon Quest Builders 2, they both released that day. I feel like God Eater 3 is flying under the radar, but I'd keep your eyes on that one. It looks like a really fun action adventure hack and slash style game. I love hack and slashes. It reminds me of the Darksiders games. Ah, uh, but I wouldn't blame you if you did want to skip that one and pick up Dragon Quest Builders 2 instead. Because um, I honestly and don't unsub when I say this. I'm probably, I'm definitely more excited for that than Super Mario Maker 2. Each to their own, and I am still excited for Mario Maker, but y'all know I love some Dragon Quest builders. <laughs> Easily one of my top five indie games, Enter the Gungeon, finally gets a physical release on July 16th. And then a few days later on July 19th, we can all start web slinging and Thor's hammering around the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 world. That sucked. Whatever. A huge day on July 26th, not only because we finally get our hands on a brand new Fire Emblem game, one of my most anticipated games of this year, and that's not even coming from a Fire Emblem fan. I just think this game looks great. And alongside that, we get to see how Panic Button did porting this Wolfenstein game over to the Switch, Young Blood. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm gonna pick it up on Switch because I wanna see how it runs, and obviously that's kind of my jam here on YouTube, but I will be doing my 
complete playthrough over on Xbox One because Wolfenstein 2 on Xbox One X in 4K HDR was one of the best looking games I've played and, and I, wa I wanna do that again. <laughs> Plus my friend's getting it on Xbox and I wanna try the co-op. Okay, I hadn't heard about this one before I started research for this video, but Kill La Kill, I guess it's an anime. I apologize for not ever having heard of this, is getting a video game and I wanted to throw it on the list because I looked up some gameplay and it, it actually looks pretty decent. It looks a lot like My Hero One's Justice. Now I didn't expect to actually enjoy that game, but I really, really did. A couple more games on July 30. We have the Trine 1 through 3 collection and Mutant Road Zero. And I actually have my eye on this game. It looks very interesting. It has a quirky sense of humor and I typically love that in games in general. Kicking off August, right? We have Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the 8th. A couple of somewhat indie games on August 20. Killer Queen Black is getting a physical release. And Rad does look like a game for me. It's made by Double Fine Studios who were just purchased by Microsoft. I think it's digital only and it's only like 20 bucks. Tokyo RPG Factory releases their next game, Ononaki, on August 22nd. If you liked I Am Setsuna or Lost Fear, don't forget to grab this one. Absolutely in my top five most anticipated for the rest of the year, Astral Chain releases August 30th. I'm definitely making an entire video just about this game. I'm very hyped, so look out for that in the future. Oh, and sadly, Astral Chain does have some fierce competition in the Dark Crystal game releasing that same day. Uh, I'm just kidding. I doubt it's any kind of competition. <laughs> on September 3rd, you get to blow a bunch of fire as well as make your own RPGs on the Switch. Spyro and then RPG Maker. I'm trying to get creative now with the way I'm announcing these. Trying four releases on September 4. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> on September 13th, I find out if Damon X Markner is actually a lot more fun to play than the demo led me to believe. And I have my hopes up. Nino Kuni is getting a remaster that is not going to the Switch. However, on September 20th, we are getting the original Nino Kuni just being straight ported to the Switch. So pick your poison on that one, I guess. I am definitely getting the Switch version for that crisp portability, <laughs> not HD. Oh, and if you're thinking to yourself, great, I really wanted to play an RPG come September 20th. Well, then you do actually have a choice to make because Link's Awakening comes out that same day. I am not making that choice. I am buying both. <laughs> Two more games on September 24th. <laughs> For those Google Stadia fans out there, could hear the crickets chirping on that one. Y'all know they announced a new Baldur's Gate 3 is being made. It's in development currently. And of course, that means Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 Remastered is on the way to Switch. The same day that we get Contra Road Corps, and this one does look pretty good too. We get our first fully fledged Dragon Quest experience on the Switch on September 27th. Just Dance 2020 for anyone that cares. November 5. So who's still playing along at home and knows what's coming next? November 5th. 15th, we get kind of a relatively unknown franchise, has a new installment in their series, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Will it get delayed with all this controversy over the Pokédex? I highly doubt it, and I look forward to playing it regardless. Doom Eternal on November 22nd. For me, personally, same case as Wolfenstein. Like I'm not playing this game on my Xbox One X. Come on! But I will get it on Switch and let you know how it goes. Now, those are all the games that have solidified release dates this year. There are some games that have solidified release dates for 2020 and we'll get to those. But first I want to go through a few games have season release dates, like fall, winter, that kind of thing. First up, we have a very spooky game. It's spooky. Luigi's Mansion 3 releases in fall of 2019. Oh wait, we do have Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games releasing somewhere in November 2019. And then in fall, we have another installment in a series that just can't decide what order they want to release their games in, Deskaya. <laughs> Initially, we got the fifth game and then they released the first game and now they're releasing the fourth game. We'll get around to two and three, I guess. Also in full, we have my favorite Resident Evil game releasing, Resident Evil 5, and then my least favorite Resident Evil game, Re Resident Evil 6. <laughs> Actually, I just said it that way to be funny. My favorite is the Resident Evil 2 remake and my least favorite is Raccoon City, but I do really like Resident Evil 5 and I really don't like Resident Evil 6. Elder Scrolls Blades is also available in full if, you know, 
you, you don't want to just play Skyrim, which is also on the Switch. In winter of this year, you can bundle up next to the fireplace with a warm cup of cocoa and apparently play a new Panzer Dragoon game. I didn't see that coming. Oh, and Sukuna. This game looks beautiful. It manages to splice up action and, and farming in one game, and that's releasing in winter as well. Okay, so apparently we ran out of seasons already. The next games I'm about to list are all just releasing in 2019, and I'll let you know when we hit 2020. Untitled Goose Game gives me Donut County vibes, and I'm ready to fool around in this weird and wacky universe. Alien Isolation is actually a real spooky game that I can't wait to play on my Switch. Rune Factory 4, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove gets a physical release. Real Mist Masterpiece Edition got announced during E3, even has a physical release from Limited Run. A game called Dauntless, which I know little to nothing about releases in 2019. Darksiders Genesis, this game looks like a mix of the Darksiders universe and the Diablo universe. It's a dungeon crawler. I don't know if I have room in my life for another one, but I'll give it a shot. Ukulele The Impossible Lair. This game is interesting. It's not really a sequel to Ukulele because it's gone to a 2D platformer style just like Donkey Kong. In fact, it was actually developed by some of the key creative talent behind Donkey Kong Country. And you know what? It looks pretty good. Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. It's a party-based role-playing video game inspired by the Baldur's Gate games. Of course, at some point in 2019, we are getting Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on Switch. Hands up if you're excited. Smash that like button if you're ready. <laughs> Final Fantasy VIII is also on the way. And that, my friends, is about 35 really cool looking games that you might have to yank your wallet out for before the end of the year. Now for the ones coming early 2020 and beyond. Now again, because these don't all have release dates, there could be games coming in January. We ain't sure yet, but the first one that we have a confirmed release date for is Gods and Monsters on February 25th. When I saw the little trailer that they showed during Ubisoft's event, it did look gorgeous. It gave me Zelda Breath of the Wild vibes, but I actually just assumed it wasn't going to be on Switch. But foolishly, I forgot that it is Ubisoft, and while they aren't in my good books right now, they have always supported Nintendo. They've always had Nintendo's back in everything, developing games just for their system, like Mario and Rabbids, or even Star Fox and Starling. So yeah, of course Gods and Monsters is coming to Switch, and with it being such a similar representation of Breath of the Wild, it should do really well. Animal Crossing releases on a very easy to remember date, March 20, 2020. You can't forget that. <laughs> Trials and Mana is a remake of a game that came out in like 1995 and already looks way better than that horrible Secret of Mana remake. Well, not horrible, but just subpar, I suppose. That game releases early 2020. Minecraft Dungeons, which is Minecraft and Diablo having a baby, and that releases early 2020. Empire of Sin I had almost no interest in until I was researching for this video and found out it's actually in the style of like those XCOM games, like Mario and Rabbids. I really enjoy those games, so I'm down to play this one, which is a gangster version of it set in the 1920s. Screw it, why not? No More Heroes 3 just comes at some point in 2020. Rune Factory 5 in 2020, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, and the last one that we know for sure is coming at some point next year is the Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. We have six more games to cap us at that shiny number 60, and they're all to be affirmed. I'll give you my speculation. Nope, that's not a word. I'll tell you when I think they're gonna come out, but right now we have no idea. Silk Song, which is the sequel to Hollow Knight. Actually, I, I have no best guess for this one, but I am ready for it. Bayonetta 3, I'm guessing late next year at this point. We haven't seen anything of it yet, and they are being so quiet about it. I feel like this game and Metroid Prime 4 were announced way too early, and Nintendo has learnt their lesson from that right now. Shin Megami Tensei 5, no one, no one has any idea on this one. I, at this point, I think Shin Megami is the, like the longest we've been waiting for something since it's been announced. I can't even recall when that initial cinematic glimpse at the game was. Metroid Prime 4 had its development scrapped and started again, and we haven't heard about that either. I'm hoping for late next year. We'll have to see. I wouldn't be surprised if early the year after. Town looked like it was coming along pretty nicely when they announced it. I'm sure once Sword and Shield is all wrapped up, Game Freak will be freed up to work on this game and pump it out pretty soon. Anyone want to take a guess on the last one? We got time. I'll, I'll wait. 
Oh, just a little game called Breath of the Wild 2, baby! <laughs> I don't think it's called that. You know how, like, Zelda Ocarina of Time and Jura's Mask, we'll probably have Zelda and then whatever this one is called. It'll be, like, the sequel to Breath of the Wild, but it won't be called Breath of the Wild 2. There is a bunch of speculation as to the release date, but I am pegging it personally for late next year. And that might seem soon. Your first reaction might be, well, they announced, like, Metroid Prime years ago at this point, and we haven't seen yet. Why would Zelda come first? Again, I feel like they learned their lesson with games like Metroid Prime 4 in regards to announcing something way too early and then looking foolish, making people wait too long. So I think just in general, they're trying to avoid that now. But on top of that, they aren't starting from scratch and developing a brand new game. They are taking Breath of the Wild, an engine that they spent five years making and just using those assets and adding to them and giving it a new story and hopefully a much darker theme. So theoretically, they could have started work on this game a year ago, maybe going into full scale production recently. And I really wouldn't be surprised if we're playing a new Zelda game late next year. Okay, now stop right there. I know what you're doing. There's been that one game in your head this entire video, and you've been waiting for me to say it, and I didn't say it, and you are so livid, so angry at me right now, you can't wait to go down to those comments and just let me know how badly I screwed up. Here's the thing. <laughs> Please do go down there and leave whatever game or games it is that I missed. Just remember I didn't leave them off the list intentionally. I love you all so freaking much. You're breathtaking, as Keanu Reeves would say. If you had fun here today, if you learned a little something or you just enjoyed the video, make sure you hit flip all over that subscribe button, smash that freaking like button and the bell with notifications turned on. I'm really excited to actually review some games again because I feel like it's been a couple weeks. 